Hi, I'm Dr. Cheryl Dunn, and I'm here to demonstrate a financial accounting problem for a company called Jolly Holly Inc., in which we are asked to calculate the net operating cash flows for the company for the year. So take a look at the problem. So as you can see, they gave us the net income for the year, and then they gave us uh, selected other items, including uh, depreciation expense and some changes in some various account balances during the year. And so we're going to start with net income. which was given to us as 170000 Then we're going to try to remove the non-cash effects from net income to convert it from net income into the operating cash flows number. We begin by adding back depreciation expense. Because depreciation expense was subtracted in calculating the net income, and yet it was not a cash outlay type of expense. And so we add that back, and that was 45000 We then have the various changes in account balances. And the first one is accounts receivable. And we see that we had an increase in accounts receivable. And when accounts receivable increases, if we think about what increases accounts receivable, the answer is sales. When we increase, we debit accounts receivable when we credit sales. And we credit accounts receivable, thereby decreasing it when we collect cash from customers. If we had write-offs or uh, sales returns, we would also factor those in. But in this case, we just have the two things to worry about. Um, and so we recognize that since accounts receivable increased, that means we made more sales than what we received in cash. The sales are reflected in this net income number. And so that means that part of this net income was not received in cash, the amount by which the accounts receivable went up. So we have to subtract the increase in the accounts receivable of 33000 Next we look at accounts payable, or salaries payable rather. Salaries payable increased by 24000 Salaries payable is the amount that we owe to our employees for work that they've done for us. And if we think about the salaries payable account, what increases this account is what increases salaries payable, which increases that happen on the credit side, is when we record salary expense. You would debit salary expense and credit salaries payable. And then what decreases salaries payable are the payments we made to pay off those salaries payable. So when we record the employee's time, uh, in their time cards, we debit salary expense, credit salaries payable, and then when we actually issue them their paychecks, we debit the salaries payable and credit cash. In this case, because salaries payable went up, that means we recorded more expense than the payments that we made. And that means that some of the expense that was subtracted in calculating net, in net income was not accompanied by a related payment, and therefore uh, we consider that increase in the salaries payable uh, to be a source of cash, in which case we are adding it to the net income because it was subtracted in calculating the net income, and yet it didn't involve the full cash outlay. And so we put the amount of which by which the cash was not yet paid, and we add that back to the net income to convert it to cash. Okay, next we're given the fact that supplies decreased. And so there again, we can think about the supplies account. Supplies is an asset account. It increases when we buy more supplies. It decreases when we use the supplies. So we use those supplies, that's when we record supplies expense. 
since the supplies account went down, we know that we used more supplies than we actually bought. And so that means that we had the supplies expense that resulted from using up supplies that we had already purchased in another period. And so they didn't have a current cash outlay associated with them. And so we are going to um, add that decrease in supplies, which was 7000 because we didn't have to pay cash out for some of those supplies that we used. Next, we look at the prepaid rent account, and it says that the prepaid rent account increased during the time period. And so there again, we can analyze the prepaid rent account. Prepaid rent is an asset account. It increases when we make payments for rent, and it decreases when we record the rent expense. And so if the prepaid rent went up, that means we made more payments for rent than what we recorded as rent expense in calculating this net income number. And that means that if prepaid rent increased, that was an additional use of cash, and so we have to subtract that increase of 12000 So that's using all the information that was given. Now we simply net these all together, and if you add 170 plus 45, you get 215. Minus 33 plus 24 plus 7 minus 12 is going to give us 201000 and that is what we will label as our net operating cash inflow. Or we could call it the net cash inflow from operating activities or from operations. There's a lot of ways we can say it, but hopefully you get the idea. Thank you for viewing this demonstration, and I hope you found it helpful.